Mushrooms are quickly becoming the cash crop of the 2020s. They're boutique, niche, in high demand, but how much does it actually cost to do it right? What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. Today, I'm talking about how much it costs to do mushroom farming right today. If you're interested, all of these items that I'll talk about and more are listed on our Amazon affiliate page. The link's in the description below. So how much space do you really need for your farm? So one consideration is your region um, and how that's going to affect your environmentals. So your space has to have environmental control over temperature and humidity especially. So if you live in a drier region like Colorado, it's going to be a little bit more costly to humidify your grow. Or if you live in a really warm region, it's going to be a little more costly to air condition your space. So then the next consideration is where your farm is located, rural versus urban. If you choose to do a rural farm, it's going to add in distribution costs, but it's going to allow you to have much more space for less money compared to if you put your farm in an urban environment, it might be more costly because you're competing for other businesses for that same space. However, the uh, demand in a city is very high compared to the rural areas. So these are some things to consider when you're making a choice for the space of your farm. Mushroom farming uses a lot of power, especially for sterilization and just the uh, ongoing fans and the humidifiers and all the equipment that's used to maintain the environment. So you're gonna wanna consider your power source. Um, it's highly recommended to have enough voltage to handle sterilizers and all this equipment um, and also refrigeration. And then the other aspect of utility is you're going to want to consider your water source. So it, whether it's well water, you're, you might have to treat that water, or if it's municipal water, um, you're definitely going to be using a lot of water for hydrating your substrate and for keeping your, um, your grow environment humid. So another consideration before you even start is the zoning. So there's going to be different restrictions or accessibilities based on your local municipality. So you might wanna consider going towards uh, zoning agriculture. So when I first started, when I lived in Denver, in order to acquire the proper license to be able to sell the farmer's market, I had to be zoned agriculture. So my zone was originally in a residential area and I had to submit quite a lot of paperwork in order to get that approved for a local agriculture zoning. So it is possible. I remember going down to the courthouse every day for like 10 days in a row, working with the zoning management and I had to fill out this pretty complex um, drawing of my house and where the farm was gonna be located but these are all things to consider because some areas like where I am now are much more lenient and they're zoned for agriculture. Another thing that kind of comes in with zoning is whether or not you decide to own your property or rent um, from a landlord. So I know a few farms that were leasing space and some things to consider are surrounding businesses or um, whether or not there's going to be room to mitigate waste and all the, um, all the uh, environmental things that come with mushroom farming. So make sure that there's accessible waste. Um, make sure that you know, it's an agreement in place before you rent your building that you're going to use it for mushroom farming because um, it does, you know, introduce a lot of humidity and it requires a lot of cleaning. So it might be um, 
a different expectation from a landlord to a tenant in that regard. There are some really important upfront costs. So I would start off my mushroom farm by buying a really good quality flow hood or FFU, um, a, a fan filter unit. So these run anywhere from $1,500 to $5,000. So if you get a really good refurbished uh, flow hood, you can get it for around $1,500. If you want a really high quality one with UV lights and you know different variable speeds, you might have to pay around $5,000. So that's going to allow for you to mitigate your contamination. And when you're doing your inoculations into your bulk substrate, you definitely need a flow hood to grow at a, a reasonable level. The next investment for upfront costs is going to be a sterilizer. So you can DIY one for about $800, or you can buy a prefab one for around $2,500. And then there are also really large scale autoclaves that you, know, you can invest tens of thousands of dollars into, but it comes with a lot of running expenses. And um, that's really for a larger scale farm. Another investment that's upfront cost, if you're building out your mushroom space, is going to be the fruiting tents. I recommend at least two fruiting tents so that you can have one that's uh, still operable while the other one's being cleaned. That's going to cost around $400 to $700 for the tent and a few hundred extra for the different fans and lights. So then the next aspect of your fruiting environment which also connects the lab to the fruiting and incubation is going to be your shelving. So I recommend have, having something on casters if it's possible, but you can DIY your own shelving for around $100 to spending $1,000 or more on really nice racks that have good wheels so you can move around your blocks without having to lift them constantly. So after shelving, I think the next most important upfront cost is going to be having a cooler. So if you check out our video on how we built our own using a trailer, um, the, the link is up above, or you can buy a commercial size walk-in cooler. Those can be you know, thousands of dollars, around $8,000 to build a nice one, or about $1,200 to DIY your own cool bot. All right, so you're gonna need bags or jars for your substrates. So that's gonna be about $4 a jar for a pack, or you can buy bulk bags for about $100 um, for a bulk size, um, I can't remember how many, like 200 bags. So, or you can buy bulk boxes on Unicorn is a good site or anywhere on Amazon these days, substrate. Um, is another big consumable item, and that can be free if you source it properly, or it should cost about a dollar a pound for really high quality oak hardwood. Um, you can you know, get anywhere in between there. So for grains, it's gonna be the same thing. If you wanna use really nice organic grains, it's gonna cost a dollar or more a pound, or if you just get bulk grains at any agriculture store, they're very good quality product, but they might have more contaminants like other kernels and whatnot. And you know, that could be significantly less. Okay, so next in line after the substrate is going to be the rest of your bag creation. So you can get tape to seal your bags after inoculation. That's gonna cost you around $2 a roll or you can get a heat sealer and those start at around $100 and you might have to buy a new strip, you know, every once in a while when they wear out, but it's very inexpensive after that. So then thinking forward in your day-to-day -day operations, you're going to need things like gloves, cleaning supplies, um, mops, mop buckets, anything that is, you know, standard um, maintenance for your farm. And that could cost about $100 to $500 up front. And then it just depends on, you know, the scale of your farm, which is going to determine how much you go through. 
lastly, but maybe the most important aspect is your genetics. Starting out with a culture library, maybe $100 will get you started with a few different varieties. And you can invest almost an infinite amount of money in this category. This is gonna be your, your lab, your R&D department, um, and basically the growth of the quality of your end product is determined by this investment. So these are the running operational costs. So you're going to want to consider the power. So mushroom farms require a lot of power. I recommend, you know, getting a upscale voltage for your area just so you will be able to operate a sterilizer while all the other pieces of equipment are working. Um, in addition to that, you're gonna to wanna to consider your water costs. So some areas, they might require extra fees for, um, for water runoff, um, which is a benefit about living in an agriculture re region. There's more space to handle things properly. Water, um, is gonna be used for cleaning, for hydrating your substrate, for humidifying your room. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to have, uh, you know, a clear understanding of the water costs. Okay, so another running fee is going to be permits. So that's going to be your local municipality, all the fees that go into having a business um, and just being able to operate. And if you choose to do um, organic certifications and other different business licenses that you might need. So next is insurance. Insurance will depend on your area and um, the scale of your business and also where you intend to uh, produce and distribute. That brings up another really important aspect is farmer's market fees. So I learned early on that you have to kind of choose between upfront costs and percentages during the season. So this is a decision that you'll have to negotiate. And, you know, it depends on the foot traffic, how much volume you'll be selling, which will depend on what makes sense for your farm. The last expense that's going to be a fee is the overhead costs. So that is going to depend if you're renting or if you own the property, but this is going to be the cost of the actual space where you're doing your farming. This also includes administration fees like running a website, accepting um, credit card payments, so fees with your banks, everything that's small but adds up over time. And then there's the miscellaneous expenses like tables, chairs for actually doing the work. You don't want to be doing this on the floor. And then packaging where you're taking your mushrooms, signage for the farmer's market, and also disposing of waste. So a lot of times you can actually get value out of the spent substrates, but there is a cost in handling the mushroom end product, which is um, the spent blocks and compost. All right, guys, once again, check out our Amazon affiliate page if you're interested in the products that we use or recommend. And until next time, much love.